Hello, and welcome to Conservation Skills in 10 Minutes or Less. This series of short, skill-based videos is brought to you by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's National Conservation Training Center in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. If you have a couple of minutes, pull up a chair and pick up a new conservation skill or maybe refresh an old one on topics ranging from fish culture to bird identification to stream restoration. Enjoy. Okay, so we're continuing on with our stepwise uh, culture of algae. If you remember from the, from the previous sessions, we started with a slant culture. And that's the first step in the stepwise process. We used the slant to inoculate a flask, in this case a 500 milliliter flask. Now we're gonna step it up even further and we're gonna move from the flask to the carboy culture. In this case, we're just using a, a five-gallon water container that you would get from from a uh, spring water company or something like that. You can use any five-gallon system that you can sterilize. As long as it's sterile, you're good to go. Um, in this particular case, we have sterilized this carboy with Clorox with 25 milliliters of Clorox per, um, per the five gallons of, of water. So the first thing we need to do before we inoculate from the flask to the carboy is to neutralize that Clorox. Obviously Clorox is gonna kill any algae culture that you put in there. So we're gonna neutralize that with sodium thiosulfate. But also, we don't want our culture all the way up to the top of the carboy. We want some room for aeration and that kind of thing. So the first thing we need to do is pour off some of this Clorox water prior to uh, neutralizing the sodium thiosulfate. So um, normally this whole process, and I've said this before at the other steps, would be done under a hood, either a laminar flow hood. If you have one that's large enough, in this case carboys can be kind of big for a laminar flow hood, but if you have a big one that, that's great. If you don't, you can use a regular style fume hood, but in this case, you don't want to use the, the blower in the fume hood because that's designed, as we talked about before, to, to pull air in so that you're not breathing the fumes that are coming out. And in this case, we would just be pulling in contaminants from whatever room that the, that the hood is in. So just leave the fan off on the fume hood. So like I said, before we uh, inoculate the uh, carboy, we need to pour off a little bit of the Clorox water to make air for uh, air space for, for the bubbling process. And you just need some kind of container to pour that water into. And you wanna pour off about four liters of the total 20 liter bottle. Uh, and this se might seem like a little bit of overkill, but I recommend that you sterilize this container as well, even though you're not gonna be putting any algae in here. And uh, this will save you some labor time down the road if, if this culture crashes, you have to go through the whole sterilization process again, re-inoculation, wait two weeks for it to grow. So just do everything right the first time and you're good. So I'll just spray this down with a little bit of 70% isopropanol. Wipe it out with a chem wipe, just, just to be sure everything is good. And the reason you do this, and you'll see when I start to pour this water out of the carboy, you can get some burping as the water comes out and then the water can hit your bucket and splash back in if you're not careful. So you just wanna make sure that that's good and sterile when you do that. You also, anything on the outside of the, the container obviously is potentially contaminated. So I like to just spray a little bit of isopropanol on the cap. Just kinda of wipe that area down. Think of yourself as a, a doctor or something, you know, you just wanna, you don't want any infection in your culture. So once you do that, you just pop the lid off. And again, you're doing all this under a hood. Obviously, I'm not doing that because, because of uh, purposes for the video. But this, is, this part can be a little bit tricky. And the easiest thing to do is, these things are pretty heavy because they're five gallons. You gotta get this bucket a good little ways away. And you can even pull it up like this and just 
I like to just rest it right on the side of that bucket to, so that I'm not holding all that weight up. And you can see it splashing a little bit. That's where that potential contamination can come in. So that's why I sterilize this, this bucket before going starting. And then as soon as you do that, get that cap back on the top. You don't want anything going back down into the, to the culture. At this point, you can just get this water out of the way. So what we have now is about 16 liters of water. We still have the Clorox in there, so we need to neutralize that. And to neutralize this amount of water with 25 milliliters of Clorox, you need 3.86 grams of sodium thiosulfate. You can see the crystals here, and it's just weighed out in a weigh boat. I like to collapse the two corners of the weigh boat together just to make sure all of the sodium thiosulfate is getting in there. Remember, this uh, weigh boat could potentially be contaminated, so try not to touch anything on the inside. I just hold it a little above the, the rim and just give it a little tap, and that drops right in. As soon as that's in there, put that cap back on again so that you don't get any contamination in there. At that point, you just need, obviously, to get all of that sodium thiosulfate dissolved. So I'll just shake it for a little bit, get that sodium thiosulfate to dissolve, neutralize the, the Clorox, and then we'll be, we'll be ready to inoculate. I would leave this for about an hour to make sure that all of the, the Clorox is completely neutralized. You may even want to consider if you're using uh, sensitive algae cultures or something that you really need to be careful with, you might even take a water sample out of here and test it with a chlorine strip if, if you're not sure or if you, this is the first time you're doing it, just to make sure that you have all that Clorox out of there because even just a small amount of Clorox in your water is going to kill the culture as soon as it hits that water. So and we definitely don't want that. So let this sit for about an hour, test it if you want to, if, you, if you're concerned, and then we'll proceed from there. Thanks again for joining us for Conservation Skills in 10 Minutes or Less. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like, or hit the subscribe button, share this video with a friend, or even check out one of the many other skill-based videos we have in this series. Have a great day, and always remember, the beautiful thing about learning is that no one can take it away from you.